Take him! Hit him again! As hunters, we have a responsibility to be proficient. And frankly, we're not born as being good hunters. We're not born being proficient hunters. Sometimes that takes practice, and sometimes that takes training. We traveled out to the FTW Ranch in Texas, just northwest of San Antonio. FTW is a training facility, it's a hunting facility, and Ruger was putting on a media event. So you had a variety of people from Ruger there. You also had a variety of Ruger guns. Any good shooting school doesn't start on the range. They start in the classroom. That's where the foundation starts. And there's a lot to cover. I haven't done a lot of long range shooting. And so it was great to get some instruction from some trainers who really know what they're talking about. And it's funny, when you do this type of training, not only do you become a better shooter, but you really start to understand your gun and ballistics even better than you did before. Because you really have to know what that bullet's doing. You have to really know what that cartridge is capable of. And then you kind of figure out where your outer limits are when it comes to long range. After the classroom, we loaded up in the Jeeps with the Ruger Precision Rifle in 6.5 Creedmoor, and we headed up top of the mountain, a 360 degree range where you can shoot targets from 100 yards out to 2,500 yards. We started out at 100 yards, just like you would with any rifle shooting. 100 yards, moving out to 200 to 300, and we kept going further and further. And we're getting hits at 700 and 800 yards pretty quickly. The further out you go, the more everything matters. The wind matters more. I mean, the elevation, uh, your drop is pretty constant. We know what that is. But for me, I had to really, I couldn't mess around with my breathing. I had to really focus on letting all the air out, hold it, and then break the shot. The guns ran great. You know, the more you get behind that gun and get some trigger time, you get comfortable with it. You can adjust that stock to fit your face and, and make sure that for you, in the prone position, you're right where you need to be on the target. And it's different for everybody, and that's why you have an adjustable stock on a long-range gun like that. Then we brought out the Ruger Hawkeye FTW Hunter Rifle in 375 Ruger. I was really surprised at what this big magnum dangerous game cartridge did at some longer distances. We were making hits at 400 and 500 yards pretty consistently. I wanna make something clear here. FTW is not teaching long range hunting. What we're doing is getting better so we can figure out what our personal distance is where we can consistently make hits in that kill zone on that animal every single time. We wrapped up on the long range course, headed down the mountain to do some dangerous game hunting training. Right, so the deal you break it open and you load like this. Right, well the, the method for me, uh, the method kind of defies some of the things I'm trying not to do and that's to take my eye off of the, the dangerous situation. Cool, all right, now set. Y'all grab your guns, move forward to the firing line. We're gonna do this load drill. Today we make big boom. Big boom. Take him! Hit him again! Top, top him off! Top him off! Fill him up! Go ahead and fill him up. Got filled up. Close your bolt. Middle safe position. Get ready to move out. So we're practicing shooting off sticks, shooting big bore rifles. This is the 375 Ruger. So really same ballistically as the 375 H and H but in a standard length action, which is nice, quicker to run the gun. So you, if you only have so much time to make that shot, this is what you gotta do. Let's take a look. What's this shot? See, what you wanna do is you wanna blind him first. Oh. Yeah, you blind him first. He's disoriented. 
It makes total sense. Yeah. I oh, mean, I wish I could think like that. That's why they call it practice, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone here is shot clay, right? Remember back in the day, right? We like high house, pool, right? We used to track it, shoot it. What we're gonna do down here is the same concept. The lead down there, believe it or not, will be from the center to the leading edge, right? Somewhere there, stay in the color. Stay on the color, apply the principles of marksmanship. Reload, you're ready to hit them again, type thing. Stand by for target. Take them. When it comes to dangerous game, equipment is paramount. Obviously, you have to be able to trust your equipment. You can't have it fail when something's charging you. The Ruger Hawkeye FTW Hunter Rifle, it ran great. And I tell you what, the 375 Ruger is a big cartridge, but the muzzle brake made a big difference. The recoil wasn't that bad. When we talk about dangerous game hunting, dangerous comes to mind. So you need reliable equipment. A media event like this is a great test. The Ruger reps are there. They're looking at how the guns are running. We're sending hundreds of rounds downrange through every single gun. So they can see what works and if there is a problem, what doesn't work and they'll make those adjustments back at the factory to make sure it's perfect. This is as true to life practice as you can get. You're following your pH through this trail. He knows there are animals up there. We don't know where they're gonna come out. On that road, on that road, take him. Again, hit him again. All right, let's advance on that, okay. I know that uh, uh, sometimes I'll have people come down this trail. I know it's working because I can hear them breathing behind me. Yeah? Yeah. So sometimes they, you know, can't simulate, uh, put real animals out here, but it's supposed to design, obviously, get a little heart rate going. This is something that would be useful even if you just hunt whitetails on your back 40. You would be a better shooter and a better hunter for doing this type of training. Quality gear from Ruger and excellent instruction from FTW Ranch. This type of training can make you a better shooter and a better hunter. So Tim, what do we have here? Well, the <laughs> this is a, a, a cannon made in South Carolina. Imagine that, right? Okay. They used to call them uh, mortars. Right. Short barreled, yeah. a giant ball yep. for breaking, you know, uh, castle walls and that sort of thing. Right. Um, but this one shoots bowling balls. It, it does. And and what we've learned, the first time we shot it, um, we put six ounce. He recommended not going over nine ounces of powder. Okay. Black powder. Yeah. So we loaded, I thought, well, let's be conservative. We loaded six. We had the angle at about 30 degrees, and that thing went way over the top of the mountain. <laughs> Gone. So we got smarter a few days later. Um, we loaded nine ounces. <laughs> nine ounces? <laughs> yeah, but we went up on another mountain over here and we wanted to see actually how far it would go. Yeah. The ball went 1,710 yards and then bounced. With just nine ounces? Yards, nine ounces. So I realized then, all right, it's time to back off. So we've been shooting five ounces consistently, trying to hit that target on the wall. Five ounces of black powder. Five ounces of black powder. Today we're going to go for a high 12, 12 all right. degrees. Okay. On a 15 pound ball. Now this is, uh, this powder is. Not our preferred powder. We usually like the RS yeah. fire decks. And this is the select, which doesn't burn quite as hot. So we put a little bit of extra powder in it to get more bang. See what we get. Yeah, yeah. It's you know it's stupid fun, but it's fun. Bowling ball can. Let's see what we get. <laughs> Look, I've never shot a bowling ball cannon before, so I had no idea what to expect when this thing went off. But when it did, it was very awesome. <laughs> there you go, bowling ball cannon. Don't you wish you had one? <laughs>